Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I wanted to talk everything about LECA, so how I transition my plants, how I grow my plants in LECA, and literally all the things. So I hope you guys find today's video helpful. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. And yeah, let's jump right into it because it's probably going to be a long one. As you guys know, I literally have most of my plants in LECA right now. So I would say if the plant is really big, I generally like to keep it in soil just because LECA is a little bit of a lighter medium. So if the plant is very like top heavy or something like that, I don't like to keep it in LECA. All my six inch pot plants and smaller are all in LECA, except for maybe like a few here and there. But for the most part, I managed to transfer almost my entire collection into LECA. And these are all the tips and tricks that I found were really helpful. Take my advice and kind of adjust it to your own situation. So don't come for me if the plants die in LECA because sometimes that does happen. But for the most part, you can kind of save it and it's really good to have your plants in LECA. First, I want to talk about the pros and cons of LECA. So there's so, so, so many benefits of LECA. So that includes a lot less work for caring for your plants. So I find my plant care kind of regimen and routine is a lot shorter now. All I really have to do is like flush my LECA and fill up the water reservoir, which I'll get into that a little bit later, but I don't have to, you know, check for pests as often. Definitely a lot less work. LECA medium is essentially clay balls, which is very moisture wicking. So it takes the water reservoir from the bottom and wicks it up through to the roots and gives it water. So by that principle, it means it's a very airy medium. It allows for more oxygen flow. It's not very compact like soil can be over time. And oxygen to the roots is very, very good. It helps prevent root rot. It allows for really healthy roots. Another really good thing about LECA is that it can be reused. So it's an inorganic medium. It reduces the risk for pest infestation like thrips, spider mites, mealies, aphids, all the things. And it can be reused so that's really good you don't have to throw out old soil when it gets bad and like it starts decomposing and breaking down same with moss which over time it can also decompose so those are more organic medium but if you were to use something like leca it's inorganic and you can reuse it just boil it again and disinfect it and then you can use it for the next plant and another thing with LECA is that there's not really any guesswork in terms of rotting your plants. You know when your water reservoir is depleted and it's dry and you need to refill it. You don't really have to guess whether or not the soil is too dry, whether it's not dry enough, and whether the bottom is not dry but the top is. So you don't really have to use like a moisture meter or anything like that, which helps prevent root rot and overwatering. So obviously there's cons of LECA, meaning, you know, it's quite pricey when you're initially starting and it's quite a hassle to transfer your plants to LECA, so that is a little bit annoying. Nutrients are expensive, LECA balls are expensive, but I mean, it's the initial startup cost, but over time, it goes a long way and it's a lot cheaper and it's more affordable, so I still tend to use LECA despite this disadvantage. Also, generally, when you buy plants from stores locally or online, they don't generally come in LECA. So you either have roots that are grown in moss or they're grown in soil. So, I mean, you do have to transfer it to LECA, which could shock the plant. And if it's a very sensitive plant, it might be a little bit risky, but that is kind of the process that you have to do to get your plants eventually to be thriving and growing in LECA. Okay, now that we went through the whole pros and cons of LECA and you've decided you want to transfer your plants to LECA, now let's talk about how you prepare your plants to go into LECA. So first you have to have clean LECA. So when you buy LECA, it comes in a bag like this. So I just bought my bag of LECA off Amazon. I've also tried the Ikea LECA, which is also really good. They're more like round circle balls of LECA versus the one on Amazon. This is irregularly shaped. I personally don't care and these are a little bit larger but yeah this comes in a really really big bag it comes in 10 liters and i've used probably about like three quarters of it so there's not much left and it was honestly really affordable i think it was like 30 dollars or something like that when it first comes you have to disinfect it and how i do that is first you rinse off all the extra powdery like dust that's coating the leka so i just rinse it under some regular old tap water and I just let it all drain through, try to get rid of all that dust. 
and then after that i just boil it for maybe like a couple minutes and then i go back into rinsing the leka so that it's not super super hot and it's ready to use so after your leka is clean i just like to store it into like little containers like this so this is a thing of clean leka so this is clean leka and let me show you the inside just looks like that I just like to store it like this because I know it's been disinfected. I know most of the dust particles are off and it's ready to be used if I were to repot a plant or transition a plant to LECA. Next is you want to take your plant. So I don't really have any to show you that are in soil right now because I've literally transferred all the plants that I have that I want to transfer. So let's say this plant is not in LECA and it was in soil. What I would do is just remove the medium, whether it's soil or moss, if it was growing in soil, I like to remove the soil bits off the roots when it's kind of more on the dry side versus when it's moist because wet soil is just like very messy and it turns to like mud essentially and it's really gross. So I don't like it when it's too, too wet. So I make sure it wasn't like just freshly watered and it's like a soaking pot of soil. But if it were to be moss, then I definitely make sure it's a little bit more moist so that it's easier to untangle the roots from the moss and remove all the little moss bits from the roots but what you essentially want to do is just clean the roots as best as you can so i like to bring it over to the sink after i get most of the big chunks off and then i start to very gently rub the roots and try to get rid of some of the soil some of the moss as best as you can the cleaner the roots the better chance of survival of the roots in leka although the plant will be growing new leka roots when it's kind of fully transitioned into leka and some of the soil or moss roots will die off not all of the roots will die off so you do want to increase your chance by getting it as clean as possible and once the roots are wet i don't tend to dry it off i just place it straight into leka so the next step is i take a container and i fill it a third of the way with my leka so if my pot is let's say this big i will fill the leka to like about here and that is kind of where the water reservoir goes up until so i'll have the leka as the base and then i'll put the roots on top so that it's situated a third of the way up from the bottom of the pot and then i fill the rest with leka so i backfill it and i try to tap the sides to get rid of any like air pockets so that the leka is more or less touching most of the roots the roots can't absorb the water if it's not actually touching wet leka so that's why i do tap the sides and make sure it's very snug in there and then i let it be so since the leka is already wet I don't find that there is a need for the roots to kind of have a water reservoir right when it's transferred into LECA. So I usually wait about like 8 to 12 hours before I give it a water reservoir. So with the LECA balls wet and the roots are already wet, if you put a water reservoir, you do increase the chance of it rotting. I mean, some people still do it. I find this works a little bit better for me. So I just let it rest and I don't touch it for eight to 12 hours. I keep it in its spot where it's normally growing. So if it's under my grow lights on my grow shelf, I just put it back. Don't worry about it for eight to 12 hours. And then I come back later, fill it with the water reservoir to the third of the line and that's it. So that's pretty much all I do when I initially transfer my plants into LECA. And I try not to use nutrients in the first week to kind of not shock it as much. So after about a week, I do start using nutrients. And this is the concoction of nutrients that I use. So what you need is a little jug of a four liter distilled water. I don't always use distilled water because I find it's a little expensive and I go through water quite frequently because I have so many of my plants in LECA. So this drug usually lasts me about a week to a week and a half and then I need another drug. So I don't want to spend so much money on distilled water. I also don't pH my water, so to each their own. That's too much work for me, honestly, but it's probably best if you buy a pH kit and then you pH your water if you're not using distilled water. So I only use filtered water. So I fill this drug all the way up with filtered water to the very top and these are the nutrients that I use. The advanced nutrients line. So there's three separate nutrients in here. I first start off with micro. So 
this is the first one that i use it's called micro and i use the same quantity for all three bottles so i use a syringe and i measure up 1.5 mils of the nutrients and i put it into my jug of water i shake it up after each addition and then i put 1.5 mils of grow and shake mix whatever and then lastly i'll use 1.5 mils of bloom i use three nutrients so that the plant gets all the nutrients it needs there's nothing lacking and it can really thrive that way so those are the three nutrients i use 1.5 mils of each mix in between each one and then i just store it in this little four liter jug for whenever i need to top off my reservoirs because sometimes they dry out at different times so whenever i check my plants and i see it's completely depleted then i just fill the water back up to the one third line and that's pretty much it i for the most part do let it completely deplete or like almost there so i don't literally check my plants every single day i might check it like once or twice a week and if i see there's no water reservoir then i just fill it up once the plant is acclimated to the leca medium the roots will tend to kind of grow down into the water reservoir and when that happens you do need to either pull the plant up so that you shift the roots higher or you can let it be for a little bit up until it gets like too many roots if too many roots are sticking out of the drainage holes you do have to kind of position it higher in the leca medium but for the most part those roots that grow into the water reservoir are water roots so they won't rot and you can still fill your reservoir up to the one third line even if roots have grown past that line so not to worry last but not least i want to talk about flushing so i personally am not really really good with flushing my plants and the purpose of flushing your plants is to kind of run water through all of the leca into the sink so that you get rid of mineral buildup any algae buildup or mold buildup so this tends to happen over a period of like one to three weeks. I generally flush my plants towards the two to three weeks mark. I know some people flush it weekly, but I'm personally just very, very lazy. So I don't do it as often, but I find I'm not having too many issues with it. So to each their own, if you wanna flush it more often, do so. If you don't, I'm sure it's fine. If you see a bunch of like white marks on the top of your leka, that usually means salt and mineral buildup from the nutrients and like water if it's not distilled or like different pH whatever so that's just my tip for flushing and you just like literally run it all the way through that's why you need pots with very good drainage so that the water can just flow through and then you can put it back into its either cover pot or in my case I use a lot of little ramekins so that's easier for me to take a look and see if there's any water reservoir inside and what kind of level is that Whew. so that was so much information and so much talking so i hope you guys found today's video helpful with your leka journey and transitioning your plants to leka i really hope you try out some of these tips and that way your plants could be easily cared for in leka because it's honestly my favorite medium i want to one day try pawn but it's even more expensive than leka so that's why i kind of want to like do it slowly but yeah i hope you guys enjoy today's video comment down below if you have any plans in leka i would love to know and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye